Hi. On the show today, we're going to take a look at a film called The Sensei and talk to its producer, director, star, Diana Lee Inosanto. Diana is actually the goddaughter of the legendary Bruce Lee, and um, she grew up in the martial arts community. Her dad trained with Bruce Lee, and um, she has been active in martial arts her whole life. Uh, she has taken that to Hollywood and been a stunt person, coordinator, and fight choreographer, as well as appearing as an actress in movies and on TV. The projects that she's been involved in include Sinners and Saints, The Sensei, The Fast and the Furious, Tokyo Drift, Resident Evil Apocalypse, Blade, Wild Wild West, The Patriot, The Roseanne Show, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Pretty impressive resume. Yes. Hi. Oh, hi, how you doing? I'm fine, Mike. How are you doing? Good. Good. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I'm glad uh, I got this working. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you are my first Skype interview because I've done a lot of radio interviews and, you know, you know, interviews by by phone, but this is nice, so it makes it more personable. Um, But it's weird because I just watched the film again, like an hour ago and so i'm still oh. talking to you like the character you know because that's how i'm used to seeing it it's funny <laughs> <laughs> well cool <laughs> anyway yeah we're it's it, it's I, i'm just so glad it's finally out because it's just been such a long endeavor you know to to get this made so you know thank god <laughs> you know it's out so and uh, i was actually happy because we actually had a huge jump on the imdb which was great it was like some crazy number, like uh, it was like a jump of 4,290% or something like that. Well, I don't know. I was really impressed by the film. I was, you know. Thank um, you. Thank you. I appreciate it because, you know, the, the producers and I and our whole cast and crew, I mean, with, with what we had to go through, um, yeah, it, it's it's been a long journey. Um, I, I don't know if you knew some of the problems we had earlier, but uh, no. uh, in the well, we were in the Associated Press when we first, you know, when we were in pre-production, actually. And I was, I filmed in Colorado, actually. And I didn't realize that there are pockets of Colorado that are very conservative. So when I went to go and, and, and check out the school districts, I, I mean, we got rejected by two school districts. And one of the school districts was the same school district that governs Columbine. But for whatever reason, the, the school board rejected us, and they didn't even read the script. And I kept saying, why aren't these people reading the script? They're a school board, for God's sakes. You know, they should be doing their homework. And for whatever reason, they, they got all caught up on a storyboard that I had where McLean gets attacked in the, the high school locker room. And for whatever reason, they were associating this with Columbine. I'm like, my film has nothing to do with Columbine. And... You know, I bear a certain sensitivity with the whole Columbine thing because my family's from Stockton, California, where we had our own massacre there uh, about, I think, probably 10 years before Columbine. So it's not like, uh, you know, I, I was just amazed that they were trying to use Columbine as a, you know, weapon to not allow us to, to shoot in Jefferson County's, you know, school district. Yeah, it's, well, it's, I think the basic theme is is certainly something that just about anybody can identify with i mean yeah. i know like when i was in ninth grade new school and i didn't really know anybody yeah. and and i got picked on like mercilessly that whole year so uh. you know and it was kind of in the same time frame so you know i mean maybe that's why the movie especially resonated with me but um because i remember aids coming out and and you know, all yeah. that stuff and having to think about it, you know, because from the beginning, I, I personally never saw it as, as a gay issue because uh, that was really myopic. I mean, there's there's just so many people that aren't strictly gay. And then it came out the right. fact that, you know, intravenous drug users also could get it. And so right. it just, you know, it to me, it was never a, a strictly gay issue. But You're right. Right, exactly. Well, I mean, yeah, you, and you bring up the whole, you know, it's during, it takes place during the, the time of the whole AIDS phenomenon because the very first person that, you know, I knew that uh, who, who would eventually die from AIDS was a straight man, and he was a martial artist, and his name was Gilbert Johnson, and he was a very close family friend, and he actually um, was very well known, like to Black Belt Magazine, all these different uh, martial arts publications, and uh, and he was also the man that helped finish the Dao Jikendo. For um, I, I don't know how if 
my publicist told you my my background, but my my father is um, Dan Anil Santo, and his closest friend and teacher was the late Bruce Lee, who was a godfather figure in my life, and I, I grew up calling him Uncle Bruce. Mm. And so anyway, Gilbert had helped to finish Uncle Bruce's book called The Dal Jikundo After His Death. So um, he had a huge, uh, you know, a huge image in the martial arts community himself, and he had contracted the, the AIDS virus through a blood transfusion. And so he gave me an understanding because he became an activist during the time that he was uh, dying. And, um, you know, he stood beside the gay community that, that this wasn't just a, a, a gay disease, but a disease that could affect anyone. Well, it also kind of makes you realize that... Um prejudice and stuff is really there and you don't think it is so much you think it's okay I mean everybody just accepts you know if you're gay you're gay if you're not you're not fine but just I think it was last week I saw a story that a, uh, a legislator in Florida is trying to ban tax credits for films that don't portray family values and <laughs> that could certainly you know <laughs> really? Yes, I'm I serious. This I swear to God, that was what I was hit with. I had people coming out in the press that were people that, you know, supposedly had a monopoly on family values, and they were saying, yeah, she has questionable values. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, I got questionable values. I'm a mother. I come from a family in the ministry as well as the martial arts world, and I got questionable values. So when you tell me this, I'm like, what? <laughs> Some people, man, you know, I, I, it's weird to me that there are just groups out there that they think they have a monopoly on God and values. It just astounds me. And the funny thing is, um, for, for me, you know, I'm, I'm biracial. My, my mother is white and my father is Asian. And they got together and got married in the state of California. Now, California was one of the only few states that allowed for mixed marriages because everywhere else around, you know, across the country, you know, interracial marriage was still banned. So it wasn't until, I guess, a case called Virginia versus Love that allowed for interracial marriage. So I know what it's like to go through that, and I know what it's like to be kind of treated taboo and that, you know, you're different. And so, I don't know, the whole gay thing to me, I, I just I sort of feel like it's just – the last frontier of prejudice that we really have to deal with in this country, you know, um, and that's one of the reasons why I had to do the Sin Day. It just, it just made sense to do this as my first film. Well, that was kind of going to be the, my next question: was where you got, you know, the inspiration for the film, and did you write the script, or was that someone else's? Or I did I wrote the script, um, directed it, and was one of three main producers? I actually, I mean, there was a whole producing team. There were other producers that came aboard, but. And my my uh, other uh, main producer was my husband and Tara Kiteman, who was also my manager as well. So um, you know we've been walking this walk together for quite a while. So it's been long. <laughs> so where where are you seeing um, most of your audience? Um, because I mean, if you just like read the synopsis, you might think, okay, well your audience is mostly going to be gays or something. But having watched the film, I mean, I think it really transcends that, and it really just. Yeah speaks to broader issues to, you know, a general audience. Yeah, I, I well, luckily, um, and strangely enough, I mean, I knew that there would be the, the LGBT community, but um, interesting enough, the martial arts community has really been really great, despite the fact there's been a couple of death threats. I mean, but outside of the death threats, um, the, the martial arts community has been amazing, and I was very concerned because I knew because of my status in the martial arts world that um, that perhaps you know I would go I was going out on a limb here but they've been great I mean Black Belt magazine just gave us this phenomenal um, interview um, and then also spiritual groups um, and then there's youth youth groups um, safe you know groups that are interested in safety for schools and bringing awareness about bullying uh, women's groups so yeah it's it's starting to really branch out so it's and I think people do they universally can uh, you know understand the whole issue what it is to be singled out or feeling different and ostracized because you know ultimately that's what the movie the sensei is about it's about dealing with the nature of prejudice and but also too it's about learning to accept oneself 